In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make Tyranid Flesh more interesting, paint the different carapace for characters, and see how we can achieve those gradients you see on wings. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a wing Tyranid Prime from High Fleet Devithan. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. And I especially would like to say a massive thank you to Greg Moore, Stephanie Coffey, Gary Hewitt and Isfan Suez, who have recently become supporters to the channel. Thank you so much. So in this tutorial, because we're painting a tyranny character, this gives us an opportunity to do more interesting things that we wouldn't necessarily do on the much smaller, more numerous miniatures. I've built my winged prime in sub-assemblies to make painting a lot easier. This is going to let me get to those areas I wouldn't normally be able to get to if the miniature were fully assembled. I've also used the wraith bone to undercoat my winged prime to make painting that pale flesh a lot easier as well. And through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the different techniques and steps that you'll need to get your winged prime painted and to make it a lot easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, we're going to learn all about the different steps and techniques to get the flesh painted. When it comes to painting the larger tyranny creatures, we have the opportunity to paint some really interesting looking skin and it's going to take a lot of washes and a whole lot of glazes, but don't worry because I'll be explaining how it's done so anyone can do it. But first we want to start by painting a base colour for our flesh and the colour we want to use for this is wraith bone. And I know we use the wraith bone spray undercoat, but the colour from the sprays doesn't always match the colour from the pot with the same name. It also gives us a chance to cover up any areas we may have missed when spraying. So whenever we're painting, it's always a good idea to thinly paint first, and I find using an equal amount of water does the trick. I also like to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some paper towel first, so we don't have an overloaded brush, giving us more control when painting. When painting your miniatures, you want to keep your brush moving so the paint doesn't build up, and we want to avoid going over areas we've already painted, to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And once you're done covering up an area, because we thinned our paint, it won't have covered very well. So we'll need to go in and paint another layer to get a nice solid colour we can work with. We also want to paint with multiple thin layers, because this is going to let us get that solid colour without losing any details on the miniature. Just make sure to let each layer fully dry before doing another one. Learning the very basics of applying paint to our miniatures and painting layers is very important and we should never underestimate the impact it can have on the finished results once we're done. Now we've done our base colour, the next thing to think about is how we can bring out all those interesting details and shapes of the flesh using a wash. But before we do this, we want to get a couple of other colours painted first. First of all, Emperor's Children can be used for all the areas in the joints the tongue, and the ridged recesses in the arms and legs. After you're done, we're also going to use some Kizla flesh to paint the fleshy areas on the elbows and ankles. Something else to remember is that we can always go back and neaten things up as we go along. We're painting these areas now because they'll also benefit from the wash once it's dried. To make the wash, we're going to thin down some Volupus Pink Contrast with Lamy Medium, and we want quite a thin wash so we're going to use one part for lupus pink to 12 parts Lamy medium. Using Lamy medium means we can make our lupus pink contrast more transparent while still having it cover more evenly and we're using Lamy medium rather than water because
because water tends to break up the contrast causing unsightly tide marks. I recommend mixing a pot of this thin wash so we can use it on all of our Tyranid miniatures. This not only saves us having to go through the process of making it every time we need it, but it also means it's going to be the same consistently every time. When you're ready, we want to apply this all over the flesh and you want to use enough so it covers comfortably. We really do want to achieve a subtle effect with this wash and although we want it to settle more into the recessed areas, try not to let it pull up too much. You will find you'll need to continually remove excess wash as it dries, but this is easily done with your brush. Our wash will have dulled down and darkened the flesh, so the next thing we're going to do is use a glaze on the more raised areas to lighten them back up. Because tyranids are completely organic, you'll find it's actually better to use a lot of washes and glazes which these softer details will benefit more from. The colour we're using is Wraith Bone and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down with two parts water making it more transparent which allows more of the colours and tones on the layer below to come through. Even though a glaze is quite thin we don't want to think of this as a wash. We always want to apply a glaze in an even thin layer. We can also build up the strength of a glaze applying multiple layers. Just make sure each layer is completely dried first. You really want to take your time with this step, as rushing it, we can completely ruin the different tones the wash created in the flesh. Glazing is often seen as a more advanced technique used by more experienced miniature painters, but it's actually not that different from painting normally. It just takes a bit more time and practice to get used to. Once you're happy with how everything looks, we can spend time working on making the flesh of the prime more interesting. To do this we can actually use our thin wash we used earlier, but being more intentional with it, applying it directly to areas we want to create more interest. And there's actually different ways we can create this interest with the wash, and the first way is to reapply this into some of those deeper recesses and areas where we would expect it to be darker. The other way we can create interest is to use it around some areas of the carapace, building up the colour in the same way we would with a glaze, applying it in even thin layers, laying each layer fully dry first. If you feel you've overdone any of this, we can use our Wraith Bone Glaze to neaten up and make sure we're happy with everything. The last thing we can do is to create a gradient or a colour shift along the wing fingers. Again we can use even thin layers to gradually build up the colour as we move towards the tips. Applying this multiple times making it stronger further along the limb helps create that smooth transition. We can switch to a thin Magos purple wash thinned in the same way we thin the Volupas pink to continue this gradient. And the same steps can also be used on its other limbs if you want to. When painting characters and larger miniatures it's always worth spending the time painting those extra cool effects and details across the model to help them really stand out in your army. It's also a great opportunity to improve our miniature painting skills and try out those new techniques. As good of a job our wash has done creating a gradient, we can take this a step further getting even darker using glazes. The first glaze we're going to use is a Barraknar burgundy glaze, changing to a Galvorback red glaze on the ends of the wing fingers to finish. With that done, the only thing left to do for the body is to highlight it. And I really want to go into some detail about highlighting, because like glazing, it's another important technique to learn if we want to elevate our painting. In this first section, I'm going to be talking about the process of highlighting and how we can go about doing it. And then later in the tutorial, when we're painting the carapace, I'll be talking about the different types of highlights we can do. When it comes to highlighting, make sure to keep a brush separate for it, so I know I've got a brush that's going to be up for the task when needed. I don't tend to thin down the paint as much either, as we want to get a strong colour without having to paint our highlights multiple times like we would if we were layering. And again, it's a really good idea to remove some of that excess paint from our brush to give us more control and to prevent thick blobby lines. When you're ready, let's use some white scar to paint thin lines along edges and raise details to help draw attention to them and to help define the shape of things. It helps to mount our miniatures on something we can hold on to. 
This allows us to move and rotate our miniatures easily, making painting those thin lines a lot easier because we can better position our brush as painting in a downward motion is the easiest way to paint a line. I'm not doing a lot of highlights at this stage as you don't tend to get many hard edges on squishy fleshy areas. So I'm really just picking out the obvious edges and details. For me, highlighting has to be one of the most important techniques to learn and to get our head around. Because not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures, it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better painters overall. For the ends of the wing fingers where it gets darker, instead of white scar to highlight, let's use some Cadian flesh tone. And once you're done, hopefully you'll see the difference a few highlights can make. Let's finish our Tyranid Prime's body now, first using Kislev Flesh to lighten those raised areas on those elbows and ankles. Highlighting these areas using Flayed One Flesh. And then to finish, we want to highlight those pink joints using Fulgrim Pink. We've now finished the body of our Winged Prime, which means we can move on to painting the next most prominent feature, the carapace. In this section of the tutorial, I want to show you how we can paint the different colours of carapace you tend to see on all the Tyranids. So we spent a lot of time in the first section of the tutorial learning about the different techniques that are used. So let's see how we can use them to paint the different carapaces, hooves and claws. The first thing we're going to do is paint our base colour for the purple carapace of High Fleet Leviathan and for this we're using Barracknar Burgundy. As always we want to work up to a solid colour which we can work from. And once you've got that solid colour we can create some interest on the carapace using an Anabadan Black Glaze to darken the ends of these extruding plates on the back and the head. To help smooth out the transitions even more we can go back in with the Barracknar Glaze and work in the opposite direction. At the same time we can use our Abaddon Black Glaze to help create definition and use this in any shallow and recessed areas on and in between the plates of the carapace. We covered the process and technique of highlighting in the first section of the tutorial. So now we're painting the carapace I can show you the different types of highlights we can do. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight. We're using Screamer Pink for this and this highlight wants to be quite a thick line so it can still be seen once we're done painting a finer highlight after. Paint this around all the edges as well as on all the raised details. For the darker areas we glazed earlier, we want to use Barracknar Burgundy rather than Screamer Pink for those chunky highlights. This chunky highlight will help to bring out all those different shapes of the carapace. Next we're on to an edge highlight and this is very similar to the line highlight we did in the first part of the tutorial. For the edge highlight we're using an equal mix of Cacophony Purple and Screamer Pink. And this is painted along all those edges and details within all those chunky highlights. To make this easier you can angle your brush and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the places you can't do this we need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. Whilst the red highlighting, we can create even more interest and texture on our carapace painting in thin lines along the edges using our mix of Screamer Pink and Cacophony Purple. These texture lines want to be spaced out evenly and vary in length so they're easily seen from a distance. For our darker areas of carapace, we want to use Cacophony Purple for the edge highlight. Now it's time for a fine highlight so we can make some edges more prominent and stand out. For lighter areas of the carapace we want to use the Chala Lilac and for the darker areas we want to use Administratum Grey. The last highlight we can do is called the Spot Highlight and this involves painting dots of Wolfman Grey on corners and points of the carapace for both the lighter and darker areas helping to really bring out all those details even more. This probably seems like a lot of effort and a lot of steps to paint a miniature, but you don't actually have to do everything I'm doing in this tutorial. I just want to show you what's possible, and you should only ever do what you feel comfortable doing. This plated area on the chest is an even lighter version of its carapace, 
So to start, let's use Barrelknall Burgundy again for our base colour. And we're now going to use a series of glazes to work to a lighter colour in the centre of each plate, starting with the Screamer Pink Glaze. After the Screamer Pink Glaze, we want to get even lighter with an Empress Children Glaze. Remember we can use a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from to smooth out the blend. And then finish up using a Fulgrim Pink Glaze right in the centre. I like the plates using De Chala Lilac. We're now going to move on to painting all the black carapace, hooves and claws, which will follow the same stages of how we painted the main carapace. Our base colour for these areas is going to be a bad and black to start with, making sure not to get any on any areas we've already painted. When you have your base colour done, something we can do for the claws to separate them out from the black carapace is to use Galvor back red in and around the recess features of each claw, and then corn red to deepen the colours in these areas and recesses to make them stand out more. With that done we can work on highlighting starting with Dark Reaper and we're using this to paint those chunky highlights. For our edge highlight, let's use some Thunderhawk Blue to pick out all those edges. Vermizian Grey can then be used for the fine highlight. Let's finish our claws and black carapace using Blue Horror for the spot highlight, painting this on all the corners and points. With our carapace and claws done, there's not much left to do so let's finish up seeing how we can paint those wings and any of the last details. For this final section, I want to show you how we can paint those wings, darker fleshy areas and any final details that need to be finished. Let's start with those wings using Flayed One Flesh for our base colour, always making sure we have a strong colour to work from. When you have your base colour done, we can work on creating a gradient using our newfound glazing skills. We want to use glazes to really help us achieve smoother transitions, especially on these larger flat areas, and because we're going to be applying a lot of layers, we won't be losing any detail as the paint is so thin. The first glaze we're using is a Kizilla Flesh Glaze, and we're probably going to need to build up each glaze using multiple even thin layers. Going back to using a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from, to help smooth things out even more. And once you're done blending in the Kizilla Flesh Glaze, we can then follow the same process for our other glazes. So after our Kizilla Flesh Glaze, we're going to use a Cadian Flesh Tone Glaze. And when you're happy with the Cadian Flesh Tone Glaze, we can move on to a Bugman's Glow Glaze, and then a Galvor Back Red Glaze to finish the gradient. Glazing is such a powerful technique because it allows us to create smoother blends tonal variation and interest across our miniatures, so it's definitely worth practicing. To finish our wings we can use Flayed One Flesh to highlight the folds of the wing membrane, switching to Wraith Bone at the ends where the Flayed One Flesh base colour is still visible. To paint any dark fleshy areas, we can start with an equal mix of Galvor Back Red and Bugman's Glow. We can then paint a chunky highlight using Bugman's Glow. And then Cadian Flesh Tone is used for a line highlight. With the darker fleshy areas done, the only things left to paint are the teeth and dyes. So for any teeth, let's first paint them with Shabti Bone, highlighting them with Wraith Bone. And finally, to paint the eyes, we can do this very easily, applying some Iandan Yellow Contrast over them. I've really enjoyed painting this wing prime and I've had a lot of fun using glazes to paint a lot of different things across the miniature and we can actually use a lot of what we've learned in this tutorial to paint a lot of the larger Tyranid units as well. So let's see how it turned out. Our Winged Tyranny Prime is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. Make sure to check out the other tutorials on the channel 
if you want to know how to build and paint other miniatures. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.